So we're still on atmospheric chemistry, which is our option topic from chapter 26 in the workbook. Today's checklist is on the screen for you. So this is taken directly from the syllabus and we're going to tick off each one of these as we go through today's lesson. So we're starting off today with inorganic carbon compounds. So we know most compounds that contain carbon um, are studied in organic chemistry. However, um, there are some inorganic compounds that contain carbon and we're going to look at a few of those today. The two that we are going to focus on are carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Other examples of inorganic carbon compounds include carbonate and hydrogen carbonate compounds. So a metal bonded to either the carbonate ion or the hydrogen carbonate ion. And another example is carbides, metals bonded to um, carbon atoms. So first of all, the preparation of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide by combustion. So carbon dioxide first. Um, powdered carbon is heated on a spoon over the Bunsen burner to make it red hot, and it's then plunged into a jar of oxygen. It glows brightly as the carbon dioxide is formed, so the carbon burns in oxygen to pr produce carbon dioxide. To produce carbon monoxide, which is something we don't um, really ever want to do, um, is you follow the same procedure, but when there is limited um, oxygen available for the reaction, if there's a limited supply of oxygen, um, that's when some carbon monoxide can form. So first of all, we're going to look um, a bit more in depth into carbon dioxide. Um, so first of all, if we react um, a test tube of carbon dioxide by shaking it with some water, um, we will notice that the carbon dioxide is slightly soluble in water. And if we were to test that solution, the water with carbon dioxide dissolved in it with litmus paper or litmus solution, we would notice that the litmus would turn from blue to red. And this would tell us that it is an acidic solution. And the reason for that is when carbon dioxide dissolves in water, it forms carbonic acid, H2CO3. Um, this is a weak acid um, and it further dissolves in water depending on the condition. So it can dissolve in water to produce um, the hydrogen carbonate ion when only one of the hydrogen ions is released from the hydrogen carbonate. So we've got two over here. Um, or if both of those um, hydrogen ions are removed, we would get the carbonate ion being produced. So it, um, you can have in water, carbon dioxide will dissolve to give carbonic acid. That can lead to a certain amount of the hydrogen carbonate ion in the water as it dissolves or, or and a certain amount of the carbonate ion as the hydrogen carbonate dissolves. Um, so key words here is um, a substance in a free state or in a combined state. So we have got, um, or carbon dioxide can take the form of its free state, which is just CO2 gas on its own, or it can be found in its combined states, which is the carbonate ion or the hydrogen carbonate ion. So all that means is free state, carbon dioxide on its own, combined state, carbon dioxide bonded to something else. Um, one of the most common substances that we have is calcium carbonate. Um, which uh, is in the form of marble, chalk or limestone. Just in the little yellow box over here, um, I'm not going to go into the anion tests, um, but this, it could possibly come up here as well that the hydrogen carbonate ion and the carbonate ion are some of the ion tests that you need to know. So it will be good to just make a quick note on those here as well. Next for carbon dioxide is its reaction with universal indicator. We already saw that carbon dioxide forms an acidic solution in water, and that tells us that carbon dioxide is an acidic oxide. Um, so we know that it's going to turn litmus indicator red, um, but we are specifically told in the syllabus that we need to know about its reaction with universal indicator solution. 
Um, so bubbling um, the gas through some universal indicator solution causes the solution to turn from green, which would be neutral for the water, to red as the carbon dioxide dissolves to form car carbonic acid. And they do state in the syllabus that they want you to describe and explain its reaction with universal indicator solution. So there is a little bit more um, information here just breaking that down. The molecules of carbon dioxide react with water. This forms carbonic acid and change the color of the indicator. The amount of carbon dioxide produced and dissolved in the indicator solution may cause the color to vary slightly between red, orange and yellow, but these are all still on the acidic side of the scale. This is the setup of the experiment here, and I've added in here the definition of a universal indicator just for your own information. Um, it's a mixture of indicators that shows a wide range of colors depending on the pH of the solution to which it is added. Um, the method and the results are outlined here again. You don't need to know um, this experiment. It's not a mandatory experiment, but you do need to be able to explain the results of it. So you don't need to have the method learned off or anything. Um, I'm just showing you because this is one that in class I would get out this equipment and I would demonstrate it for you. Um, so it's just here for, um, for you to have a look at. Other methods of preparation of carbon dioxide um, would be reacting an acid with a carbonate or hydrogen carbonate in the lab. So at junior cert, you would have learned off that an acid plus a base gives salt and water. And you would have also um, known that an acid reacts with a carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate to also give a salt and water, but it produces carbon dioxide as well. You did this experiment in junior cert by adding hydrochloric acid to calcium carbonate or marital chips, and you collected the carbon dioxide gas over water, similar to our ethene experiment that we did not too long ago. This experiment is not on the syllabus. I'm just um, pointing it out to you, um, linking it back to your junior cert experience. Um, the other method of preparation that is on the syllabus that you need to know um, for carbon dioxide is fermentation. Um, this is a method that you might have heard of for producing ethanol and carbon dioxide is a co-product um, of the reaction linking us back to um, our chapter 25 on industrial chemistry. So if you're fermenting let's say fruit you get your fruit that contains um, glucose um, it's reacted in the presence of yeast to produce two um, molecules of ethanol and two molecules of carbon dioxide. So the glucose is broken down into ethanol and carbon dioxide. At the end of this experiment, your ethanol, or at the end of this process, your ethanol is separated by distillation from the carbon dioxide. And hopefully we're all aware of the test for carbon dioxide here. Um, which is lime water. If you bubble, if there's a gas being produced and you bubble it through lime water, um, a positive test for carbon dioxide, confirming that it's carbon dioxide, would be the lime water turning milky. The uses of carbon dioxide, the main one that you're told you have to know is that it puts the fizz in fizzy drinks. These are often referred to as carbonated drinks. Essentially, the carbon dioxide is dissolved in flavored water um, so that you get the, the fizz. The other uses will be that it's used in fire extinguishers and to produce the mist that you see in special effects in stage productions and things. Um, so under pressure, carbon dioxide forms a white solid called dry ice. Hopefully none of you have ever had to use a fire extinguisher, but you may have seen one being used. Um, and that is the dry ice substance. Um, this happens at a very low temperature and that also allows um, another use for um, carbon dioxide is that it can keep objects cooled during transport. Carbon monoxide then is a colourless, odourless, tasteless gas and it's extremely poisonous. The fact that we um, can't see or smell or taste it um, means that it's extremely difficult to detect. The reason it's so poisonous is that it reacts with the hemoglobin in blood and reduces the hemoglobin's ability to carry oxygen around the body. Um, it is formed due to the incomplete combustion of fuels in cars and in cigarette smoke. 
Um, so for that reason, fuels should be burned in well ventilated areas to ensure that there's a plentiful supply of oxygen because the oxygen can oxidize the carbon monoxide to produce the less harmful carbon dioxide. Um, and this is also one of the key um, um, factors in deciding many years ago that cigarettes could no longer be smoked inside in public areas. Um, catalytic converters are present in all modern cars to convert carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. However, in older cars, if they're not present or in newer cars, if they're not working efficiently, um, this can lead to lots of carbon dioxide being released from that car. Um, you'll notice in cities that there's often um, a higher amount of carbon monoxide in the atmosphere. And this is because the carbon or the catalytic converters may not have heated up properly and may not be working properly on those short journeys that people would be doing in the city. Um, the most important thing on this side, I think, is that it is a neutral oxide. Carbon monoxide is a neutral oxide. It does not dissolve in water and it does not react with acids or bases. Therefore, it has no effect on universal indicator solution. And I would highlight that for yourself. They do want you to know it's a neutral oxide and therefore it has no effect on universal indicator solution. That is stated in the syllabus, but you only have to state what kind of oxide it is and the effect it has on universal indicator solution. Whereas carbon dioxide, you have to know it's an acidic oxide and you have to be able to explain its reaction with universal indicator. Carbon dioxide then can also dissolve in the oceans because the carbon dioxide in air is constantly in contact with the water. Um, some of this dissolves and is changed into hydrogen carbonates and carbonates. However, some of it is used up in photosynthesis by plant material in the water. And some of it is dispersed into deeper regions um, of the ocean where there are much lower temperatures and that will ensure it remains dissolved. And the reason we're mentioning this is it links nicely into one of the following parts of this chapter on the greenhouse effect. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and it's very important that some of it can be removed from the atmosphere by dissolving into the oceans. This is just a diagram of that. So the carbon cycle next. So carbon dioxide um, quantities remain fairly constant in the atmosphere. So there's usually 0.03% carbon dioxide in air. And the reason for that it is, is that it is constantly being recycled um, through a number of processes. So it's constantly being added to the atmosphere and removed from the atmosphere. The two key processes in these two boxes here are the first two photosynthesis and respiration, which you'll notice are two, um, the two equations are the reverses of each other. And so the reason that carbon dioxide has remained fairly constant most of the time in the atmosphere is because plants are photosynthesizing at the same rate as animals are respiring. And so they're constantly balancing each other out. Um, another way to remove carbon dioxide from the air we just mentioned is dissolving um, it in oceans or rainwater or rivers, dissolving it in water, basically. Um, however, the key um, factor recently has been the burning of fossil fuels. This is increasing drastically the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is contributing to um, the greenhouse effect and global warming. Um, roasting of limestone is also another process, um, so in industry, that creates a lot of carbon dioxide. So this is the carbon cycle that you can see in your workbook as well. And the key points here that you need to note from it is that we have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It is removed by dissolving it into waterways and by photosynthesis, and it is replaced in the atmosphere by the roasting of limestone, the burning of fossil fuels, and by respiration. We're back to the checklist now. Hopefully you are able to go through this now and tick everything off. You can find the checklist in the files section of the chapter um, up on Teams. 
and if there's anything here that you feel we didn't go through in enough detail for you or you need some clarification then note it down and you can send me a message